There are certain forces that can only hold you back so far or for so long, depending on how you interact with them. And when you take your power back, when you choose to say, no, I'm not doing that. No, I'm not giving into that. No, I'm not playing in that cycle with you any longer. You effectively take your power back. And once you really stand in your, stand your ground and really own your power, there's nothing that can stop you. But there's a catch. If you're gonna own your power like this, then you have to take responsibility. Hello everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Happy Tuesday to you. So it is Tuesday, November 2nd, 2021. I hope you guys are doing well. Um, for my Patreoners, I did not do a, a transit report this morning because... I like to focus those transit reports on, um, like the daily ones on the moon and the moon is still in Virgo. The moon is going to be in Virgo until about Friday. So I figured we already talked about it so far. Um, I didn't really feel a need, a necessity to go into it any further. So let's just get into the collective reading for the day. Yes. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you had a good Monday. Um, and I hope you have a fantastic Tuesday ahead. Yes. Please keep in mind, guys, that this is a general reading, right? So it's not necessarily going to resonate with everyone. Take what resonates and leave what doesn't. At one point in life or at one point in the past, I, um, I, I mentioned, I was saying that morning coffee was timeless, but that's gone back to actually surrounding the actual date of the reading because I'm focusing on my, uh, my, my attention on the moon now. Um, and so that's going to make things a little more time sensitive. So if you guys are wondering why I've been saying it's no longer time sensitive, that's why. Although at this point, you guys probably all know that by now. Um, there, there really isn't an agenda that I want to get into. Uh, I kind of woke up this morning. I slept a little bit later than normal this morning, which I was not expecting because I went to bed fairly early. Like I think I was in bed by like 830 last night um, and fell asleep fairly quickly. But then I woke up around three, which is kind of normal. You know, Orion likes to go outside at that time. Jinx wanted to go outside as well. So I let them out. But then I went back to sleep. And I fell asleep pretty hard. And didn't wake up until six. When I normally wake up at five. I don't know why I'm telling you guys all this. <laughs> there was a point to it. What was the point? Oh, I was just saying how I slept a little bit later than normal today. Lots of, okay, well, there was a lot of activity in the dream space. Um, I don't know if you guys are experiencing that right now. Um, last night was, there was a good amount of dream activity. Although I can't remember what it was. I have feelings. I have like snapshots of images, but I could not tell you what was happening. I do know though there was some, there was some stuff going on and it felt good, at least for me. So, um, that's probably why I slept a little bit later, but why I'm a little more tired than normal. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, that's it. Let me stop rambling <laughs> and let's get into today's message. Yeah. Excellent. Let's do this, y'all. Here we go. Sorry, guys, I got to get myself situated. Okay. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve their highest good and the highest good of all involved. Please give us clear and accurate representation of the energies in terms of these situations, situationships, romances, relationships, and circumstances in which we all need it the most. Thank you so very much, Spirit. 
Okay, guys, actually, I did just remember something that I wanted to, that I want to mention. Yesterday, for me at least, turned out to be a day that I got a, I, I guess we could say a deeper understanding of something, just like I had predicted in morning coffee yesterday. Um, and I guess, yes, you could say it's a deeper understanding. Um, but it's also, it, for me personally, it feels more like acceptance. I was able to look at a certain part of my reality and work on, and I've been working on this, um, you know, work on seeing it uh, as it truly is, work on seeing it from a higher point of view, work on forgiving, work on con holding unconditional love, like really working on forgiving. And that's something that I've been struggling with for years, you guys, for years, ever since I was a little kid. But at this point, I can kind of look at it and see it for what it truly is, not what it meant to me on an egoic level. Not to say, not to diminish any of the negativity that it caused, not to diminish any of the damage that it caused, not to, you know, whatever. But I was able to work on understanding it from a different level, which was helping me to, well, I would say I was successfully working on viewing it from a different level. And that was helping me to forgive. That was helping me to let go, release the anger, release the resentment, release the negative energy that I wanted to instinctively throw back at these people or these circumstances or whatever. And like stand there and like in my, in my egoic self and wish all kinds of destruction and damage and, and retribution and blah, blah, blah on people that have wished the same for me throughout my life. Uh, and that's where I was in the past. I would think about it or I would get caught up in the emotions and I would just throw that energy right back. But we can't do that anymore, you guys. I mean, it was never really beneficial or good for us to begin with because all we were doing was fighting fire with fire. All we were doing was taking that same negativity, the trauma, the pain, whatnot, whatever, and that was thrown at us, that was aimed at us, that was projected onto us and just throwing it right back, doing reversals. Like say someone puts the evil eye on you or say someone um, is manipulating you energetically or casting spells on you or just trying to sabotage you and you you not only block the spell but you wish for it to be reversed back onto them at one point yeah that was gratifying not to say that i ever really practiced witchcraft like that but it would happen in my mind that's for sure um at one point it was gratifying. At one point I felt it felt justified. At one point it felt like if I do that, then I can get back at them and they would de defeat my enemies. But it just keeps that cycle of ne negativity going. And the negativity, whether it's, whether, you, whether it's entities that were put upon you by someone else, whether it's entities that are using someone else as a puppet, whatnot, whatever, it's still perpetuating negative energy, you guys. It's still perpetuating evil, I guess you could call it, for lack of a better term. And that's not what we're trying to do here. And that's exactly what dark, demonic forces, however you want to describe them, that's exactly what they want. They don't care who's fighting who. They don't care if it's their own team that's fighting each other. Unless, of course, it's getting in the way of their goals. They just like that energy. They feed off of that energy. Have you ever noticed... Have you ever... Have you ever, um, because I'm getting an image, an image in my mind now about like this, a troublemaker. Have you ever had a sibling or a cousin or a friend, a classmate or whatever that just likes to stir the pot? And no matter who's involved, Okay, even if they're people that they or, or individuals that they seem to have an alliance with or a friendship with or whatever, they still like it when they're where people are fighting, where people are arguing with each other, when people are 
when like spreading dirty rumors and, and getting people uh, 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 um, uh, against each other to turn their backs on each other to blah 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 this that and the third they don't care who as long as it doesn't affect their image they could they couldn't give a flying fuck who's out there fighting each other and if they could stir the pot and get that fight going they like it even better have you ever noticed that But the one thing that would defeat them is to not allow them to stir the pot and get under your skin. Don't fight fire with fire, guys. It is time for us to stop doing that. And that's the, that's the realization that I came to. Like, it's not that I just came to that realization yesterday. But yesterday was an energy in which I could sit with it and be like, yeah, I'm on board with this, actually. Like, that... That whatever I'm perceiving in my intuition and just like whatever over there, that's pretty fucking shitty. Like, screw them for doing that. But at the same time, I'm not going to hate on them. I actually kind of get why it happened. That doesn't justify anything. But in hindsight, and especially in looking at the state of the world today, I absolutely understand why it happened. Why it's continued to happen. But I'm not gonna re I'm not gonna send reversals on them. I'm not going to send daggers to them. I'm not going to wish ill or death or 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 destruction on them the way they've done to me. No. Because that just perpetuates the same energy. That just perpetuates the same bullshit. And I choose to step out of that. And I choose to disconnect myself completely. But. Choice is yours though, right? All right. Cool. Let's give this five shuffles. One. Oh, sorry. Wait, hold on. I got to knock on the hat up. Yes, we're awake. Okay, excellent. <laughs> wait. One. Two. Three. What's going on for the collective at this time? Four. And five. All right, kids, what have we got for the collective today for Tuesday, November 2nd? What messages do we have for the collective today? Tuesday, November 2nd. What messages do we have for the collective, please? Tuesday, that's it. All right. Okay, look at this, you guys. Overall energy is the Nine of Pentacles. Which is rep which represents Virgo energy. The moon is still in Virgo as of today, November 2nd. The moon will be in Virgo until about Friday of this week. I can't remember now if it transit if, if the moon moves into Libra on Thursday. I think it moves into Libra on some sometime on Thursday. Uh, maybe mid-morning or towards the afternoon. It doesn't really freaking matter. We have the Nine of Pentacles at the bottom of the deck as the overall energy with the Four of Wands under that, the Queen of Wands under that, the Ten of Pentacles under that, the Page of Cups to the Three of Swords to the Ten of Cups. You guys, this is a really excellent energy. And this is kind of mirroring what I was just talking about. So, what does this say? Three of Swords, Page of Cups. Well, actually, it's the pa I'm going backwards now. So it's the Page of Cups to the Three of Swords, right? We'll start there. The Page of Cups to the Three of Swords is talking about a new emotional reality coming out of the heartbreak. And, and also, also, underneath the Page of Cups is the Ten of Cups. So um, this could be you opening up to a new emotional reality here. It's definitely you opening up to a new emotional reality in terms of the past and the heartbreak or whatnot, whatever. And this, I feel like, at least for me, this is the deeper understanding that I came to. This could involve your family with the Ten of Cups, but also the Ten of Cups is just representing ultimate wish fulfillment on the emotional level, right? Okay. 
Um, but I definitely feel like there is an energy here of the collective. I just heard resetting themselves. Page of Cups, Three of Swords, okay? Which is wonderful. Now, keep, in, keep it moving here. We have the Ten of Pentacles, the Queen of Wands, the Four of Wands, and ultimately the Nine of Pentacles, which is what we started with. So, as you can see here, you go from the Nine of Pentacles to the Ten of Pentacles, all right? But in between the process of going from the Nine of Pentacles to the Ten of Pentacles, you have Union, Four of Wands, and this is Union within yourself. And then you also have the Queen of Wands, which is your alignment, with this you, which is you being align, in alignment with what it is that you want. And this personal sense of union, four of wands, is what gets you into that alignment. And what helps you move, progress from the nine of pentacles, which is a, a strong, sovereign, independent state, to the ten of pentacles. Your life's work, your ultimate fulfillment on a physical level, whether this, be, whether this involves family. This could involve family as well, the ten of pentacles, okay? Long-term goals. I feel like there's a, a level of clarity here for the collective that we are able to tap into at this point, given all the work that we've done, um, that it allows us to really hone in on those long-term goals and make it happen. Take the steps to make it happen. It feels like nothing's going to stop you now. This is beautiful, guys. And this is all just underneath the deck, overall energy, all right? Let's get into 555 five, five on the counter. Let's get into the cards here. Four of them have fallen on the table, all face down. So there may be a little bit of a secretive energy for you right now, which is fine. Lots of major arcana here. You have the Hanged Man, Death, Three of Cups, and the Star. The Three of Cups feels like a celebration. And it's a celebration because I'm hearing you won. You gained the change in perspective that allowed you to go through the transformation that has brought you to this place of balance between mind, body, and spirit, or masculine, feminine, and inner child, three of cups. And that's leading you towards your dreams, the star. And yes, it's leading you towards the dream, your dreams, but the star actually feels more like healing because the star can represent healing as well. And it's this healing that leads you towards your dreams allows you to move forward towards them, allows you to break free so that you can pursue your dreams. For some of you, this, what it is, the, the dreams that you are perceiving of in this energy that the star is representing is new stuff. For some of you, it's stuff that you didn't think you were capable of going after. Some you didn't think you were, cap you were, you were worthy enough, you were talented enough, you were good enough. You were able enough of mind, body, and spirit. But I just heard it's destiny. You were also destined to break free from this, hmm, spirit is saying carnage. <laughs> okay. There are certain forces that can only hold you back so far or for so long. Depending on how you interact with them. And when you take your power back, when you choose... To say, no, I'm not doing that. No, I'm not giving into that. No, I'm not playing in that cycle with you any longer. You effectively take your power back. And once you really stand, in your, stand your ground and really own your power, there's nothing that can stop you. But, but you guys, there's a kicker. There's a catch. If you're going to own your power like this, so that no one can stop you or whatever, however you want to, however you want to say it. If you're going to own your power like this, then you have to take responsibility. You have to take responsibility for where you find your responsibility for where you find yourself. You have to take responsibility for what happened in the past, regardless as to what, how, what your involvement was or how deep you were involved or not. You were still there. You were still involved. You have to be able to take responsibility for yourself if you're going to hold your power like this. 
You can't hold your power and then stand there saying blaming X, Y, and Z or or Tom, Dick, and Harry or Sally, just Justine, and Jessica for the shit that's going down in your life. Obviously, there are some situations in which you're out of control or you know you had no control over it. But you do have control over your response. You do have control over your reaction. Yeah, that's not the best word for it, but response is better. We, we, we should be responding, or it would be best to be responding, not reacting, right? Yes, the universe is going to throw you curveballs. But how are you going to react, respond to them? That is you holding your power. And when you stand in that place, when you keep yourself in check enough to say, no, I'm not going there, no, I'm not hanging out with that person, no, I'm definitely not getting myself into that situation because, damn, that looks like a, a shit wreck. That's when you truly hold your power. And thus, we have this transformation. The hanged man, death, the three of cups, body, mind, and spirit, masculine, feminine, and child, and the star. The star really does feel like healing here, you guys. Yes, ultimately healing that allows you to, or allows you to go for or delivers you to some sort of wish fulfillment, but the healing comes first, right? Beautiful. Um, what do we want for clarification? Not much. I don't really know what to clarify here. It all seems pretty clear. Let's, uh, okay. So for some of us, this three of cups energy is a little bit of a hive mind mentality that you seem to have healed from, released yourself from, and that's definitely cause for celebration. Last shuffle. And let's talk about, let's talk about the Three of Cups then. What's the Three of Cups for the Collective? What's the Three of Cups for the Collective, please, Spirit? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Bam! Bam! Okay. So the Three of Cups actually does represent some hive mind mentality for some of us. This is in the past, though. It has a double meaning. In the past, or when we're referring to the past, it's representing some sort of collective consciousness. Hive mind mentality, keeping up with the Joneses type energy, right? Caused a lot of confusion for you, okay? Seven of Cups. It also caused a lot of sorrow for you. Five of Cups, for any for whatever reason, for any given reason, really, whether you were trying to keep up with the Joneses and it just wasn't working for you, um, just because like the things that you were doing just weren't panning out because you weren't supposed to be a part of it, but that's okay, right? The Three of Cups could also be, or the the the, the confusion here could also be not knowing which way to go, listening to too many damn people at once instead of just truly listening to yourself. I'm seeing someone literally running around in circles, trying to figure out how to keep up, trying to figure out how to be a part of the crew, a part of the crowd, a part of the team. Bitch, you ain't trying to, you ain't supposed to be a part of that shit. And I say that with all the love in the world. I have never fit in, ever, okay? That doesn't mean I don't have friends, and it doesn't mean I didn't have friends growing up, but I was always the oddball. I was always the odd man out. Even when I was hanging out with a bunch of girls, I always connected with women first before men. And it got to a point in high school where I didn't even feel like, even though I had a ton of friends and a ton of girls around me, I did not feel like I fit in with anyone. And I still don't to this day. But you know what? I am quite proud of that because I don't need to fit in. I don't need to be a part of your crew. I don't need to be a part of the crowd. It doesn't mean I hate you. It just means that I will not dumb myself down. I will not water myself down. I will not 
change who I am just because you don't find it acceptable. That is your problem. And there is nothing you can do or say to tell me otherwise, to try and get me to feel bad about it because bitch, I love being by myself. I love it. And there are probably people of one that I could particularly name, but I'm not going to. But I'm sure there are plenty of people out there that wished me to be alone, that wished I didn't have any friends, that wished I didn't have a boyfriend or someone to love me, that wished I was excommunicated just so they could prove how much of a bad person I am. But that backfired because now I love myself even more and I have no problem spending all of my time on my own. <laughs> and thus, we have the final card that is clarifying the Three of Cups. The Six of Wands. Victory. So yes, this Three of Cups is a celebration. In some cases, it represents the past in terms of the hive mind mentality, keeping up with the Joneses, blah, 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 blah. But currently, it also represents the celebration and the union the union of body, mind, and spirit. And thus, overall energy clarifying this Three of Cups is judgment. Ooh, to the Queen of Cups underneath that. Okay, emotionally balanced? Go ahead, sister. Go ahead, brother. You better get emotionally balanced, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Spirit wants me to clarify death next. What is death for the collective here, please, Spirit? Ah, yes. What is death for the collective? That's enough. Ace of Wands. New inspiration, new direction to move in. You have two cards. One of them has fallen face down, one has fallen face up. The card that has fallen face up is the Four of Pentacles, but it fell on this pile here that was clarifying the Three of Cups. So, so the transformation that we're speaking of in clarifying death is you releasing what it is that you were holding on to, thinking that it was a part of your foundation and you would not survive without it. Malarkey. <laughs> One last card that's fallen face down underneath the surface. Oh, so you released this shit, this false sense of security. And what did you connect to? The real security, the Empress. That's big. That is big, you guys. Because that is you releasing the stronghold that the 3D illusion has on you and recognizing that you are just as abundant and powerful as anybody else on this planet. And nobody has the right or the ability to disconnect you from this no matter how hard they try. And sure, there may be some situations or circumstances in which your enemies or those that want to take you down might be, a, might be successful, but only to a certain extent, especially if you keep your faith, if you can keep your connection to God, source, creator, if you keep your connection to the universe intact, however you want to describe it. As long as you keep your connection, you work on holding your connection and maintaining that connection, you're good. And those enemies that are trying to defeat you might be successful to a certain extent, that, but that will all come back to them. That will all backfire on them eventually. So don't worry about it if, if, if the universe allows them to slide every once in a while. They're just setting, the universe is literally just setting them up for disaster later on. It's okay, don't worry about it. But you see, you've let this go. And that is how you transformed. Four of Pentacles, which fell sideways on... Right, you get it, okay. Last thing I want to clarify is the star. What's the star for the... Yes, that's the one, okay. What about the Hanged Man? Maybe. All right, what's the star for the collector? Eight of Cups. What's the star for the collective? Three. I 
just, man, like, stay right there, okay? All right. Damn. Boop. King of Wands. Confidence on fleek. Clarifying the star, you have your healing. Okay, yes, the star is going to lead to wish fulfillment, but it's the healing that comes first. Eight of cups to the three of swords. Bam, look at that healing. It's all good. You know what? You hurt me in the past. You really did a you really did a number on me. And quite frankly, I could hate and despise you for the rest of eternity. But that's not going to get me anywhere. That's just going to hold me in this space with you rolling around in the muck. I think I've had enough of the mud. I'm going to go take a shower and move forward. It was nice working with you. Thanks for teaching me a few things, yeah? I hope you I hope you fare well. Last card that's fallen face down. Energy's underneath the surface. It's the ten of fucking wands, bro. <laughs> You're not carrying this baggage anymore. King of wands, six of pentacles, ace of cups. The devil to the three of pentacles. Yo! Okay, so we'll check it out. King of wands, six of pentacles, ace of cups. This is you feeling extremely confident, saying, I am going after what is reciprocal. And I'm not giving to these situations that just steal from me, that usurp my energy. Why? Because I love myself. And I love others. And I kind of love you too. But I'm not going to sit here and, put, and, and roll around in the dirt with you any longer. I'm going to go where the situation is reciprocal. And if I have to be alone for a while... Well, I was going to say that maybe that's for the better, but actually I think I would prefer that a little bit. <laughs> Joke's on you, right? After this, though, you have the devil to the three of pentacles to the seven of wands, you guys. So whatever evil, whatever destruction, whatever negativity that you have been dealing with, whether this is somebody putting this on you, wishing bad upon you, whatnot, this, that, and the third, or this is just life circumstances. What the darkness doesn't, oh, actually, you know, I'm not going to say that. I am not going to say that. We can talk about this theory later. But what I will say is what certain individuals don't know or don't realize is that whatever demons, death, destruction, whatever that they threw at you only made you work on yourself which only made you stronger. <laughs> and now you're strong enough to just like, like now I'm seeing you're strong enough to stand there, this big person with this little runt of a, of a fool trying to fight you. And you're just kind of like face palm, like just watching them, just holding them back with the palm of your hand, watching them scramble at you. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. And you're like, I, I'm, doesn't look like you're getting very far right now, does it? I mean, he's just so tiny. I mean, look at it. It's so cute. <laughs> uh, don't mock them. Don't mock anyone. That is not polite. That is fighting fire with fire. That is not being compassionate. It is funny, though. Anyway. <laughs> this is beautiful, you guys. All right, fine. All right, cool. Okay, so last, last one. Let's clarify the hanged man. What's the hanged man? What's this change in perspective for the collective? I, I don't want to take any more. I don't want to take any more because this is so perfect. The hanged man is clarified by the hermit. Self-reflection. Self-awareness. This devil energy can't, can't touch you if you're self-aware. The more you learn yourself, the more you get to know yourself, the more you get to learn your triggers. You understand your triggers. You understand your vices. You understand your past. You understand why it is 33, 33 on the counter. You understand why it is you are the way you are and you work on fixing it. Then the devil has nothing to use against you. Overall energy clarifying the hanged man with the hermit is the fucking emperor to strength to the two of cups to the wheel of fortune. You guys, I'm getting fired up, man. I'm getting fired up. Have you? Could you tell? <laughs> 
But we have the emperor, which is the master of the domain, you being the master of your own self. Nobody can best you if you've already bested yourself, babe. The emperor, strength, holding your own, standing your ground, keeping your ego in check, not, in, not letting someone's petty actions get under your skin and trigger you and get the best of you. Now, some of us had to go through those circumstances in order to understand that. Don't worry about it. It's par for the course. Next, you have the two of cups. This is that bond with yourself. And when you fuse yourself together, when you get your masculine, feminine mind, body, and spirit and all that shit in line, that's when you change the game. The Wheel of Fortune. And this is your fortune that they can't touch because you got it on lock. It's your God-given right. And if anybody thinks that we are in, these humans are in control here, you are sorely mistaken. God is in control. And yes, yeah, some shit's popping off in society right now, but it's necessary for us to understand what's really happening underneath the surface on behalf of those in control. I'm going to leave it there. Closing Oracle Guidance is coming from the Fairy Forest deck today. Ooh. ooh. All right. So what we got for the collective here? Closing Oracle Guidance. Uh, four more shuffles. So this would be two. Three and four. Two, three, four, right? And five. There we go. Okay, we're good. We're set. All right. <laughs> All right, kids. Closing Oracle Guidance. What have we got for the collective today? Oh, all right. All right. Card number 16, soul kin, recognition, family, kinship. Ooh, y'all, this really could have to do with family. But I'm also getting an ancestor, ancestral energy. One of the readings that I did for Mystic Unicorn yesterday, uh, it was for Taurus, actually, was about, it, it, it felt like the theme there was breaking some sort of family curse, um, which is good. Hello, little bug. What are you doing, little bug? You're crawling on my cards, little bug. That's okay. I'm not going to hurt you. You just, you go over there. Okay. Uh, but there could be some ancestral help that's coming through here. You really could be working on clearing up some family karma, uh, the lineage, okay? You could be a chosen one. I don't really like that term. That term has been flying around the collective a lot lately. We are the chosen ones. It, again, it, it feels, you know what that feels like? It feels like what the twin flame label was used as. A way to make you or make someone feel or sound better than someone else. Oh, I'm a twin flame. Oh, I've got this big mission. Ooh. Sit down. You're not better than anybody else. And just because you may be considered or you may see yourself as a chosen one, please sit down because you're still not better than anybody else. The difference, and maybe and maybe you get more recognition for this, but the difference is that you're, you are choosing to stand up and be chosen. Everybody has an equal right to be chosen to a certain extent. Some people come into a life, into a specific lifetime to handle certain things, especially on behalf of karma, uh, uh, family karma. So yes, you are chosen in that sense. Because you are the one that actually stood up and said, I'll handle it. And God was like, great, let's do it. But it doesn't make you or anyone else better than anybody else, okay? I just, I just want to throw that out there. It's not that you don't get, you're, you're not meant, it's not that you don't receive recognition for the role that you're playing, especially if you're really doing it, okay? But please sit down. 
because it doesn't make you any better than anybody else. We are all equal here. With that said, there is, an, there is some ancestral lineage going on here, maybe some ancestral karma, or maybe your ancestors are coming through, really helping guide you through this, whatnot, whatever. Beautiful. Anyway, let's read the card. Soul Kin, number 16. All right. We often wish for our relationships to endure long beyond their lifespan. Friendships and relationships have been drawn to us according to the lessons the soul wishes to learn. There are relationships that are more superficial, and then there are those that touch us deeply. With great, loves, with great love comes the possibility of pain or for pain, and each of us must come to some kind of peace with the truth that there are relationships that will not be sustained for this lifetime. When we feel this deep recognition, and when we find it very difficult to let go of a person, we may be dealing with soul kin, a being with whom we may be traveling through lifetimes. This thread of relationship is strong and connected with you at present, and you have encountered a person who speaks to your very soul. Know that for now, this connection is grounded, nourishing, and full of faith. It may shift and change in time, but for now, the friendship is strong and full of maturity respect for each other's growth, and dedication to the highest purpose for you both. In time, this may change, as your souls have, ha have their own destinies, and this sometimes means there will be a departure from a common code and path. But for now, this connection is one of soul family, of kin, and is one you can draw on for your own sustenance and also contribute to for the beautiful purpose of being a shining light for others. Excellent. There you have it, kids. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. I am sending you so much love, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading or for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yes? Beauty mess. Bye. <laughs>